All right, this is the new Fire in the Sky from Tetsuya Nakamura. The original, I think, was published in Japan years ago. Then there was a Multiman Publishing Edition, which is a version I've, I've had before this. I don't have the, uh, the very first edition. And then there's this new one. So let's take a look inside the box. First of all, a lot of dice chucking in this game. And this appears to have five... Uh, white and five blue dice. Wooden dice, I should say. Pretty cool. Whole bunch of baggies for storage. That's always a nice feature. So you can stow the components suitably. We have some cubes, which I'm not... The, the uh, MMP version didn't use this. I, I'm assuming this is for control. Um, some, some measurement to... Uh, Designate who controls what. There are some force screens that can be used for some fog of war, which is kind of cool. Task force screens. This is this is also something new to this edition. Rule book. It's not a super complex game, but I can tell already the artwork's been uh, completely reworked. The MMP version had pink counters <laughs> and lots of flowers if I remember correctly. So everything you need is gonna be in this rule book to play the game, full color, charts on the back side. What are we talking about? 18 rules, 18 pages of rules, 19, page 19 and half of 18 is really optional rules. And so this looks like a pretty straight reprint. Just a cursory look at this. A lot of it, this looks really super familiar to me. So you got a rule book there. Scenario book. Now this is something new. The scenario book is feels thicker than the rule book does. And you have, looks like some examples of play here. I always like to go through, through things backwards. So kind of gives you, okay, there you go. Yeah, from rule number nine onward, Page, what, 15 onwards, we have an example of play. So there you go. And then as far as scenarios go, uh, the game itself has, what, four scenarios? Six, yeah, six scenarios now. The original game, I think there was just two scenarios. It was like the whole war and then a, like a 1942 start. So this has got a little bit more in the way of scenarios. The counters are absolutely, um, these, are, these are great. These are thick, rounded. These are absolutely deluxe. Really, really cool here. Uh, neat improvement. They're not larger. The MMP version has huge counters. So they're not larger, but they may be um, a little bit thicker and already pre-rounded for you. So... That's what's going on with the counters. Now, one thing I, I can already see that I don't like is the silhouettes on the ships are really hard to see uh, against the blue background here on the, uh, the U.S. Navy. So on the front side, you have kind of a darker silhouette, and then on its activated side, when it's, when it's finished, it's a little bit more ghosted out. I don't particularly care for that. But what can you do? So this is the uh, counter sheet number two. I want to see what they do with the Japanese here. And we have the uh, the British, the Dutch. Cool there. They got the De Reuter. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember if there was two Dutch ships in the original or not. That that might be something new here too. All right, so there you go. That's the uh, Americans. Oh, and these are the these must be the air counters. That's cool what they did with those. I like that. Uh, this represents land-based air, and they're hexagonal, as opposed to uh, uh, just being another square counter, as it was in the original or the MMP version. So I do like that. Looks like the land counters are rounded, which I also like. I like some of those decisions there. Okay, so the Japanese looks like they are going to be white. Primarily, so the Kaga and Akagi, Hiryu, Soryu, cool. All the carriers that you know and love, 
Again, the same kind of artistic design. It's kind of ghosted out on the background. It works on the white. It just doesn't work as well against the red background or the blue background. It's a small knit. So hit counters are going to be on uh, rounded tokens. And uh, looks like there's uh, targeting markers that you can use as well. There you go. Lots of cool stuff here. Overall, I like, I, I'm going to have to say, this is still an upgrade over the MMP version in terms of the, the artwork decision. Um, I kind of like the, the overall way that the ships were depicted, the, the physical silhouettes were depicted in the MMP, but the way that the data is presented on here, I think is going to make it easier for players and more intuitive for players to play the game. You have a player aid card here, and then a battle board big thick battle board where you're going to track your air point sea control long ranged air all that stuff uh, this was just on card stock in the MMP now it's a full blown uh, mounted uh, piece so the map board itself remains in the box and so I'm going to need to unfold that before I continue all right I don't have a lot of room to work with here so I don't have it flattened out here but it is a cards or excuse me a mounted board it is the artwork is is pretty different from the uh, original game or from the MMP version I should say it's the same size of tabletop footprint but I think people are going to like the artistic design uh, decisions here it's a less busy artistic design and so the game revolves around capture of bases. The numbers on the bases has to do with how many ships and air points you can base there. Uh, the, the Americans will be able to uh, have multipliers that allow them to put vastly more uh, ships into these areas. And aircraft, as the, uh, excuse me, aircraft points will, will increase for the Americans as the war progresses. And so the goal of the game is really for the Japanese to conquer bases and for the uh, allies to get those back before uh, the uh, the time runs out. You're against the clock. And the game really revolves around the use of resources like oil, shipping points, in order to uh, uh, be successful. And so for the Japanese, you have to, you have a lot of ships that you can use at the beginning of the war, but you're not going to get many new ones. And you got to use your oil points to, to move them around and fight with, which means you got to capture these oil locations quickly. You also have to defend against submarine attacks that are diminishing your merchant marine navy. And they are also diminishing the amount of oil that you're bringing in to continue the war effort. And so it's really a neat uh, depiction of the war in the Pacific primarily from the naval point of view it's painted with fairly broad brush and yet there's attributes of detail and so the game kind of hits on three levels there's a big strategic picture you have an operational level kind of feel when you start to move task force around and then the battles are going to feel very tactical so kind of a cool game in that respect i love a game that kind of hits all three of those areas and uh and, and this is something that you can play in Oh, four to six hours tops. Uh, I think that if you had two players really going toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, you could get this done in probably about uh, four hours or less. So a little less playing time than something like Empire of the Sun. And, um, and so that kind of gives you an idea of what this one is about. Fire in the Sky, Great Pacific War, 1941-45, the new Phalanx edition. There you go. That's what comes inside the box.